Well, quite randomly, uh, I've ended up with a Mercedes EQE for the day. Maybe a little bit longer, depending on how uh, sharp Mercedes are at, at uh, fixing our E-Class. Um, probably need to do a video on on the E-Class. It's got a bit of a floppy rear suspension and uh, it's taken a few goes at, at getting it fixed, but fingers crossed, hopefully, today will be the day when it's sorted. Anyway, EQE. Um, first electric vehicle experience for me. Um, this is a bonkers bit of kit, really. I think uh, there was one sat in the showroom about 87 grand. Not really, this seems to be pretty high spec for Mr. Sound System. I think it's a premium plus EQE 300. Um, so probably in and around 80 odd grand, 90 grand's worth of car. Um, they had an E300 formatic in the, in the showroom at the same time. 55 grand, all the bells and whistles. Not really sure why you would spend another 40 grand to get an electric version of, unless it's a company car or a salary sacrifice, and then there's obviously tax benefits to doing so. First drive, a um, bit disappointed really. It didn't kind of feel as fast as I thought it might. Um, there's a few different the usual modes. It was in comfort, so maybe I didn't give it the uh, the best chance. But I must admit, the 335 diesel feels as quick. Maybe there's just more theatre. This is very quiet, very smooth. Not a lot going on, not a lot of noise. So maybe there's a bit of um, a bit less emotion around it. Um, obviously, it's got the fake sounds, which we'll have a go at in a minute get to an appropriate bit of road but yeah it didn't really feel like it shoved you back in the seat um seat position was a bit odd when, uh, when i first got in it you, basically i've not got a huge view i've got size 10 feet and i had a pair of walking boots on and i couldn't get from the throttle to, to the brake without catching on the pedal box um which was a bit disconcerting and uh yeah i think that's a bit odd really it's like surely there must be more room down there for people with pretty normal size feet. Um, if you put a pair of trainers on, it is a bit better. There's also a, a seating position adjuster where you tell it how tall you are and then it will put you in a seat position. It put me in a really strange seat position, but I kind of get it actually. It makes more sense, um, but it doesn't make it feel very easy to sort of see out of the car. You can't really see the corners of this car because it's bit of a blamongy shape um, not a big fan of the outside looks I've got some really rough old b-roll to show the outside because it is chucking it down today um, but yeah not not the best looking thing obviously all geared around uh, being slippery through the air for maximizing the battery um, range so yeah what else to say um, yeah the seat position bit odd they, you sort of give it your height but you don't give it your inside leg so it knows you're six foot one but it, you know your legs could be 32 inches 31 inches 33 inches but it takes a punt and I think you can you can then tweak it from there I started out it felt like a 1980s Ferrari because you I needed to push the seat a lot further back but the steering wheel this is, I think is as far out as, a, as the wheel went so it was a kind of like some of the 80s Ferraris you need really short legs and really long arms um, but at least the steering wheels kind of in the middle uh, which is good um, so it's going to be a, a really rough and fast video today um, I've not got the car I don't think for more than today uh, I've only got a couple of a couple of GoPro batteries and unless you've got USB-C adapter then you're going to be scuppered in this car because it's USB-C only. I haven't found a USB-A socket anywhere so I can't even do any charging on the go. Steering's very sharp, very pointy, very quick. I think uh, it may have rear wheel steering. We'll have to have a look at that in a minute. Yeah. 
does indeed have rear wheel steering. Pretty sure it will be air suspension. Obviously it weighs 5,000 tonnes. Um, not sure what the specs are, but it, I guess it must be well over two tonnes, maybe even two and a half. Um, so probably have air suspension. The tyres are, um, or the wheels should I say, a 21 inch. Uh, let's have a look at this now. to me. Maybe it's just because it's ultra smooth and I'm an electric car virgin. Yeah, tyres 21 inch. I think the fronts are something like 235, 35 section, rears 285, 30, rubber bands. Uh, so there's a little bit of tyre noise, but obviously other than that, not a lot of other noise going on. Um, relatively quiet in here yeah the, the ride's okay actually I reckon it is air suspension there's the odd kind of jiggle over small bumps it's just a shame it's got such enormous tyres it probably needs them to, to deal with the EV power um, I'm guessing it's uh, all wheel drive I did get it to on a bit of a brisk acceleration earlier it did sort of feel like the axle the rear axle had a bit of axle tramp in it just sort of skipped around a bit screens loads going on you can obviously set different there we go uh, yeah different screens you can have the full navigation up on the screen it's got pretty snazzy head up display which you might not be able to see on on the uh, camera we'll have a look at that in a minute um, and then there's lots of different head up display types of choice um, yeah, different different drivers display with a little 3d spaceship G meter thing going on there. I think uh, when I got in the car it had about 99% charge, it's got 89 now, it's saying max 305 miles, it said about 330 when I got in. Uh, I must admit it used about 5% going on the way home which is kind of, I don't know, 5-7 miles, something like that. So I don't believe the, the 305 mile range. Um, but we'll, we'll go for a bit of a play and see what that does. What else is there to say? Um, bonkers amounts of electronic jazzery. Touchscreen, absolutely riddled with fingerprints. If you've got OCD, maybe don't bother. Um, obviously it's not my car, so some lots of people have probably been in here mucking about with it. Um, I guess, yeah, it does pick up fingerprints pretty easily, so. Maybe get a little flannel to give it a polish, if that bothers you. I've got to say, I just can't imagine going in and buying one of these, unless it was some sort of tax efficient thing, throwing 85, 90 grand at one, uh, and passing up something uber swish, like a Range Rover Sport, or I don't know, an X5, hybrid which is a pretty efficient thing if you're in company car tax world or salary sacrifice world or you know just go and get an m3 touring x drive and chuck 90 grand at that i mean those kinds of cars are probably not going to be around for long unless people get a reality check and realize we need a mix of fuels and actually electric isn't that's such a great idea on the whole um and then ooh recuperation noises um, yeah I mean make something like an M340i or an M3 Touring it feels like the last chance go and buy one and just keep it forever because actually chucking 90 grand at something like that that you can run forever and just look after and it will probably be alright even if you've got to rebuild the engine at 150,000 miles that kind of makes a lot more sense from a sustainability perspective Anyway, rambling. The dashboard has got this kind of not quite Alcantara, slightly plasticky flock type material, and it reflects horrendously badly in the windscreen. I, I thought the screen was fogged up at first when I got in, but it just it just 100% across the windscreen reflects. Apart from where the cutout is for the head-up display, which makes a really nice dark 
square for you to look through but everything else is just reflection city um i think it's just because it's lighter material if it was the the dark alcantara type material that's on the seats it wouldn't be too bad but it's like a light gray color and uh yeah it's just oh dear what's going on here yeah it just reflects badly I'll let these wagons go and then we can uh, give ourselves a bit of space have a play don't much fancy tangling with a 40 odd tonner with a 90 grand car that isn't mine. Strong recuperation! Um, let's have a look. Settings. Sound experience. We've got silver waves. Vivid flux. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like uh, when you used to clip a playing card to your bike spokes when you were a kid. Yeah, not sure about that. Silver waves, I think it's more of a deep rumble. Sounds a bit diesel y. Let's go with that. We like a diesel. Have a look. Sport. Sport. Eh. Whoa. isn't it but uh, fuck me Recu oh yeah this, the recuperation actually pulls the brake pedal away from you which is a bit disconcerting I guess you get your, if you're braking hard you get your recuperation anyway so you can kind of just leave that in whichever normal feels about right really uh, yeah I suppose you can down paddle into strong recuperation or just brake a bit harder really Do you know, it, it does control its weight really well. I guess the weight's sort of low down, isn't it? It's a big old bus, though. It feels big, particularly on these small roads. Um, in sport mode, allegedly, it does change steering, suspension, according to the screen, at least. And then there's an individual mode where you can set as you please. Um, I don't really know what it does. It's, it's not like an internal combustion engine or a standard auto gearbox where you get a different speed of shift or holding the gears. It just probably just sharpens, sharpens up the throttle, makes it a bit less efficient. And a little bit more fun. What we like on battery? Eh, not too bad. 86% not getting the fear yet although it only came with a, a fast charging cable so I can't even plug it in at home so I pretty much do need to retain some charge for taking it back otherwise they might not be too pleased hot batteries Yeah, so I do a, I was just about to say before the batteries got too hot and died, I do a 205 mile journey to our <coughs> head office and because I'm a nutcase, I like to do that in one stint, which can be sort of excellent run, three and a half hours, more likely four, sometimes four and a half. Um, and, you know, 
I just don't want to have to stop. Um, so being able to do over 200 miles in one hit is kind of important, but you know, it's probably not a sensible way of doing things and uh, it wouldn't be that big a deal if you had to stop and just, you know, stick it on charge for 10 minutes to give you a, a rapid charge to throw a few, you know, a couple of hundred, mi 100 miles in it or whatever and give you some flexibility at the other end of a journey like that rather than being down to, to nothing. But um, yeah, I guess it's all doable. I'm not sure I'm ready for the inconvenience of not being able to just stop anywhere, throw fuel in and away you go. Ooh, that wasn't, I didn't break very hard there. Hit a man or cover. Uh, and I was just before the battery died actually, I was coming to a stop at a roundabout and it did this weird porpoisey thing. Like I couldn't modulate the brake pressure. Like someone who's just starting out learning to drive and they can't wear the clutch, it was really quite unpleasant. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe because it's in sport. Yeah, it's probably this in sport mode. There's also an eco mode, I'm not sure what that does. Probably just gives you a really, really soft throttle. Maximizes your range. Back into comfort, I think. Yeah, that, that porpoising was really not very nice at all. Uh, and when I hit that manhole cover there, it sort of locked up, dived into Mercedes emergency braking mode, which is well renowned for being pretty vicious. Uh, and that was not very nice. And, you know, the cars that we own just don't do that. I mean, there's a bit of understanding where the ABS wants to kick in, but um, I don't know, they're just, the drivetrain's a bit more simple, and even the E-Class, which is not particularly uh, designed to give lots of feedback, uh, doesn't do anything weird. It's doing it again, you see, I'm trying to brake. Having to uh, brake a bit harder than I wanted to. Hmm, that's unpleasant. So to sum up, um, interesting, interesting, a lot of money. I mean, cars have gone nuts at the minute, but, but these things are uber expensive. Does it feel like a 90 grand car? I, I, I don't know, I don't, don't think it does to be honest. It actually feels a bit hand-built. There's a couple of things that are just not quite symmetrical and uh, I've got some B-roll of that one. Sure. <sighs> Clearly, a sort of engineering marvel in terms of the technology that's in them. There's a huge focus on technology in these things, in terms of the screens and how it interfaces with your phone, and you know, it's got wireless charging, all the stuff that you might need. But honestly, that's all just necessary. I just want a car that's fun to drive get some feedback, you know what it's going to do, it's not going to do anything silly, it's not so heavy, light and nimble, this does a good job of controlling its weight, to be fair, these brakes are really hard work, um, they didn't feel hard work earlier, I don't know, I wonder what's, I've changed something, yeah, I don't know, it just feels like car makers are 100% focused on all the tech that they can throw at these things. Maybe it's just a younger generation who've got that interest, but I'd like the car to drive superbly in every way. I don't want to be thinking about brake modulation. I want it to have a nice hard brake pedal. I want it to drive, steer crisply. I don't know, it used to be that you borrowed a car from a main dealer and then you were a bit sad when you took it back because it was just better than your car even though your car was only three or four years old they'd moved on there was the next generation and they were just better and you were sad because you had to give this nice crisp new car back and i don't really feel like that anymore even if i could afford to go and chuck 90 grand at a car it wouldn't be this I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be this right well, I hope that's been in some way useful. Uh, maybe slightly entertaining, maybe not. And um, I'll try and do some more content on 335, uh, which seemed to get a good reception. 
um, and we'll maybe do a video about why the E-Class has gone a bit floppy at the back. Right, take care everyone, bye.